Kanata and Aegers land at the racetrack, and around them there's not many teams. To the north is Iomzo and Rise, to the east is nobody, to the west are two teams covered by these hills, and to the south is three teams contesting Mega City. They can loot relatively freely in the open, as the only team close enough to actually get damage onto them is Rise and Iomzo to the north. And this drop spot has everything you need. Instant shield from the slurp trucks, metal in abundance from all of these railings, fast harvesting brick, plenty of chests, and even hollow chests. This can be looted so quickly that it only took Kanada 1 minute and 50 seconds before he had this loadout and was already rotating to get better visibility onto the teams at Mega City. Upon arriving on this hill, he builds a brick base and throws a bush bomb on top so that he can peek easier without overexposing himself. This position not only allows him to look over Mega City, but look back at the racetrack to ensure no team is sneaking up behind Agers as he's still in the area. Unfortunately, the Mega City teams are aware of him going to this position, so he deals zero damage here and is forced to rotate back to the racetrack. Since they got the slurp truck off spawn, they've not needed to use any minis or big pots up until this point, and since since there's so much loot in this area, whilst Kanada was off doing this, Aegers was looting the rest of the area and threw all of the spare leftovers back into the center of the POI. Since they had all these additional heals, they could play more aggressively for their storm surge tags, Kanada trading with Iomzo to the north, and Aegers pushing up confidently with the mammoth pistol much closer to Rise. Since Iomzo and Rise are now aware they're looking at them, the opportunity is lost, so Aegers returns back to racetrack, but hears that another team has sneaked into the bush next to him and is waiting to pounce. He plays this slowly knowing this other team is looking at him and waits for Kananda to rotate over to get an angle onto the same team. Then 3-2-1 spray into the bush to try to get as much damage as possible. Understanding that there's starting to become a lot of players around them and with 200 storm surge damage total they push back into the racetrack, ensure their metal is capped and then disengage to get away from the edge of the zone which is near the drop spot. From this point in the game you'll see a trend with every single rotation that Kanada and Aegers make. As soon as the third zone pops, Aegers throws a slap splash to give them infinite run energy and they white line towards that next safe circle. This particular zone pulls north so they drop down into the jungle biome and ensure when they're rotating that they stay close to the edges of the walls to cut off line of sight from as many players around them as possible. On this rotation they also go past a hollow chest that they open to give themselves more slap splashes. You can see here how they know there's a team above them on the top of this hill so whilst sprinting they're staying as close to this wall as possible and then once they're in an open area where this team may possibly be able to see them you get closer to the wall that's underneath them and cut off that line of sight again. The jungle biome is fantastic for this type of rotation in particular and that's why so many players will go through there but you'll see in this game Kanada and Aegers do a really good job of doing this through almost every single rotate. They ended up settling on this hill position as there's more hollow chests here where they could potentially get more slap splashes from but don't end up actually opening anything here. This position is relatively close to the edge of the zone but not close enough that I would consider it a low priority position as there's not many teams to the north of them that will stop their rotates. The third storm circle usually has so many players just playing in the storm that as long as you're not on the full edge line of the safe circle, you should have a reasonably okay rotation for the next storm circle. So their position here can actually take advantage of all of these large cluster of players to the south of them in the storm and start to rack up their damage. And of course, while they're positioned here, they are split apart from each other to give themselves more angles to rack up damage on different players coming from different areas. As soon as that fourth zone pops, they do the exact same thing they did in the third zone, so Aegers throws a slam smash and they use this infinite sprint to get themselves to that next storm circle. Notice as they leave the box, Kanada, while falling down, places a couple of wood walls in front of him because he has no information on if there's any teams to the north looking at him. And he stops placing walls once he's scouted and understands that no one is actually looking at this direction. So they grab some mud. A lot of people already know the mud bug where you sprint, crouch, uncrouch and crouch again to give yourself some increased movement speed. Now you can only do this as long as you have sprinting energy but because they've used the slap splash prior to rotate they have infinite sprint energy for 30 seconds so can use this combination to rotate themselves much deeper into the fourth zone. Unfortunately though Aegers does get shot at the back once they just make their way into the fourth zone meaning they have to box up so that he can heal. After he's popped a big pot they attempt to try and rotate again but Kanada doesn't have any information and this time it doesn't place any walls in front of him whilst leaving his box and gets tanged up for 88 damage and it seems like they're getting forced into this position. With so many teams to the south of them which will rotate up, they have to find a way to get out of here. Because they've rotated so early, they have time to scout and look for an opportunity. And Kanada notices the team holding them on top of the hill gets into an engagement with another team, giving them an opportunity to run. Again, they get close to the wall to cut off the line of sight if any of these teams start to look down, but one of the players makes a massive error in ziplining up. 
they're back in the game. They go up, get the finish, get the materials refreshed, but don't stick around in this area because again, all of these players from the south will rotate up and they don't want to get stuck in amongst them. So unsurprisingly, they throw another slap splash and use the mud to rotate as close to the center of the fourth zone as possible. Unfortunately, on this rotate, Kanada does get shot in the back. However, notice the heals that he uses. He has the Mud Warrior Reality Augment, which heals him back up to 150 HP. And then Aegis just throws another Slap Splash, which they probably would have done anyway for the rotation, resulting in Kanada not having to waste any of his minis or big pots. Since they're 500 above the Storm Surge threshold, they don't need to deal any damage or be near any players, so they opt to focus on going towards the center of the fourth zone, as this gives them the highest amount of chance of pulling the fifth zone, which, as you can see, they end up doing. They zipline up on top of this small iceberg, but this position actually gives them some very interesting sightlines. To the south of them, the way they rotated is the only way that players from the south can rotate up using the mud. There's also a ton of bases all the way around the outside of the cliffs here that players have built on, plus Loot Island is to the south of them, so they really aren't short of players to tag for storm surge damage. You may think this means that there's going to be a lot of angles that players can look onto them, but you've got to remember that this is a fully north zone, so the majority of the players are stuck along that south side of the edge in low priority areas, so when the 6th zone pops to the west, they have a completely free rotate to make. Unsurprisingly, they throw slap splashes, drop down, grab the mud, stay close to the walls to cut off any line of sight from the teams that are around them, and easily make their way into the next circle. They essentially take a calculated risk of where they want to go. The goal is to get deeper into this circle as they keep away from more players rotating from the east. However, on this rotate, they do get tagged up and start to get focused a little bit, so they choose to box a little bit away from the edge of the circle, which on the next rotate we'll find out is a very important position. The sixth zone in this game has so many players alive that it's incredibly laggy, so if they edit a wall they could get lobby focused, so all they do here is sit and gain as much information peeking through their cone so they can prepare for the next rotate. During this time they have a plan for wherever the next zone is going to pop, so as soon as that seventh zone appears they use yet another slap splash and instantly start sprinting because they already have a path mapped in their mind. Remember I said earlier that rotate a little bit deeper into the zone was really important in this game, and as you notice, all of those other players are congested on the edge of the circle. So since they've rotated this little bit deeper, when they start this rotate, there's almost no one in front of them, meaning they can run past this hill, cutting off line of sight to all of the players who are on the opposite side of it, and get into the zone completely free. You'll notice that once they've made their way into the zone, they box fully in metal. And this is because there's so many players in such a small clustered area that if you're sitting in brick, there's a high likelihood that you're going to be lobby for focused again. So two zones in a row, they've implemented something that'll stop the lobby looking at them. The low layer that they choose here looks like not the best idea because typically higher layers give you easier access to rotations. However, from this position, they spray down players' floors trying to look for elims and actually get a free refresh with slurps and gold loot, a complete game-winning inventory at this point in the match. But they now have a huge problem. The eighth zone pulls max distance for them and since they spent this time getting this refresh, they haven't scouted and don't know what their path looks like in front of them. Similar from the third all the way to the seventh zone, they slap and then instantly rotate before everyone else. And on rotate, they're both scouting. Kanada looks to the front and to the sides, and Aegers is consistently looking behind them. Then, the second they see a player, that's when they finally start to build and tarp their way in. But since they were the first team to rotate, they're ahead of everyone else, meaning there's nobody to hold them. So once they finally distance themselves from this team behind them, they sprint all the way around this hill, yet again cutting off more line of sight from the majority of the lobby. Had they waited a little bit longer to rotate, some of these teams would have ended up in front of them and been able to hold them, but since they were first to go, they turned what was a really difficult max distance 8 zone rotate into something that was relatively free. The last two zones when they boxed up, they kept a relatively low layer, however into this zone, this is where they finally start to elevate themselves as the moving zones will be next. Luckily, they pull the first moving zone and they understand that a lot of the players will have to rotate towards them, which gives them the benefit of starting to hold these players and look for eliminations. This is actually really important because they were only 148 above the Storm Surge threshold, and despite not getting any elims, holding these players got them to 265 above, so Storm Surge was no longer a worry. Now many teams struggle with no mobility since they can't just use kinetic blades or shockwave hammers to rotate the moving zones, but Kanada and Aegers use a risky but effective rotate here. Knowing there's teams in front and above him, when leaving the box, Kanada places a wood wall and cone in front and above him to block the majority of angles in a very material efficient way. He then sprints and jumps and lands on a bunch of ramps that he's placing in front of him, which blocks the front angles and the players that be able to see him from here and elevates him to a higher layer, only
only using a minimal amount of wood. At the same time, Aegis follows behind and blocks to the right, where the majority of players are using a little bit of wood, and that's pretty much the only team that has eyes on them outside of height. Tanada then sprints, jumps, and places cones to walk on, and immediately switches to brick once he's over the top of an opposing team's tarp. He's material efficient, knowing to use wood when no one's looking, but as soon as there's a bit of danger, he'll switch to his hard mats. Once they get into the zone, he boxes in metal to ensure he doesn't get sprayed, and throughout this entire rotate, is only used 18 builds for the entire of the first moving zone. Now, this did look like a bit of a risky rotate, and it was, but the only teams that had visibility on them were the teams at the backside of the zone, and Canada and Agers had rotated early enough to distance themselves from these teams and not get shot in the back, and then Reet and Ritual on height were also still stuck at the backside of the zone, focusing on the other players who were stuck at the backside of the zone, leaving Canada and Agers just to sprint this basically completely for free. Because of the layers they chose, once they get into the zone, they are diagonally above another player and notice that that team does not have awareness that they have the cone there. Picking up these two elims would give them game-winning loot. However, unfortunately, these players do notice that they're going for the floor, and Canada and Agers have to back off and find another way to get their materials refreshed. The ninth zone pulled on them and they got great RNG, however, the 10th zone pulls completely max distance away from the entire lobby. However, similar to our earlier rotates, Canada has already planned and prepared for this, and as soon as that zone pops, he starts rotating. Since yet again, they've decided decided to rotate instantly, they were one of the first teams to start going, and because of this, they can be a little bit riskier with what they decide to build. Since he's rotating so early and no one's looking yet, he opts to use a stair tarp, being very material efficient. Of course, there's only so long you can get away with this for before other players start to look at him, so he ends up getting tagged from one side and Agers ends up getting tagged from the other. This forced them both to box up and heal, but thankfully they were far enough ahead in the moving zones that they could look back and go for Elims, Agers actually picking up two, grabbing slurp juices and tons of materials. Whilst he's focused on looking back, Kanada is still focusing on where they need to position themselves ahead and sees that the zone pulls through Citadel and that they will need to elevate. Whilst doing so, he sees that the height team doesn't have many materials since they're single flooring and using some wood, and since they've just got these refreshes, they have the inventory to be able to go up and take height and win the game. But as he starts cranking for it, Kanada gets pieced by rituals and gets jumped in on the box, wiping him out from the lobby. Luckily, Aegis comes in clutch with the one pump but is left as a solo as he's unable to get Kanada back into the lobby. He's unable to get any of the materials from these refreshes as he gets pressured from the back wall but he narrowly manages to escape the box and since he has no information on this layer and understands there's a lot of players around, he instantly elevates himself up one layer and continues double ramping upwards. Remember, he knows that the team on height was scuffed as they just chopped them down so there was still an opportunity for him to take it. Once he had elevated enough, he turns around and starts to spray a team who's also trying to fight for height at back zone. He knocks one down and cracks another one, denying their height retake. Since the zone pulled over Citadel, all of the players clambering up were forced onto low layers, used all of their materials, and also lost a lot of HP in the storm, meaning Aegers up on height can just look down and mow through them, giving himself easy eliminations. With the final moving zone pulling back through Citadel, all he has to do is stay up on height and spray at the final remaining player down below, draining his mats and suffocating him deep into the storm, allowing him to solo clutch the game win. Despite the fact that Kanada went down relatively early in the moving zones, the call he made to go for height in a Citadel moving zones, who Agers in the position to solo clutch this win, leading to Kanada and Agers winning their first FNCS championship.